everybody, I'm Bonnie Barker with Bonnie Bay Crochet and welcome to Friday Fun Live. And we've got lots of fun things to talk about today. Let me go ahead and adjust this down just a little bit. There we go. I um, hope you guys are doing well. Um, I've made progress on my Christmas list, so I am really, really excited. I think I'm done. I've got maybe two things to do, but they're minor and I am done. So, um, and it's just so much fun, as you know, to... To have things, uh, either whether you make them or you purchase them or whatever, you know, just finding that special someone for that those people that you love. You know how wonderful it is? And I can't even tell you about one of them. I really want to tell you and show you, but I can't because Hannah's getting one too. So Hannah's our moderator today. Thank you, Hannah, sweetheart. Well, thank you for taking care of Grandma Barker. And um, she's not feeling all that well today, but she is there for us. It's not COVID or anything like that, guys, but... Um, she is a trooper and is, is is working hard for us. Well, let me go ahead and I want to say, hey, um, there were quite a few of you waiting patiently in the chat. We have Beverly and is it Etty and um, from Indonesia, Kimberly, Stella from California, Alice from Fort Worth, um, Lupita from um, Chihuahua, Mexico, Jackie from Vancouver, Gail from um, New Hampshire, Gloria, and she has a kind of a fun comment here. She says, I have a bucket list and growing, but for now I need to be kind to myself and let the bucket list grow. I injured my left knee. I must be patient. Oh dear. So sorry to hear about that, Gloria. I am going to have to write that down somewhere. Uh, hold on a second. Let me, I'm going to make my own list today. Um, as we go through this, ah, pardon. <laughs> All the moving around, but I, I just want to go ahead and make make notes. Okay, sorry for all the wiggling there. Um, let's see who else we have. Uh, we have Sherry. Um, we have Love to Craft says hello, hello there, and we have Wanda Gordon um, in the chat. And she's praying for Bobby. That's very kind of you, Wanda. Um, and Bobby is requesting prayers as well. We'll keep you in our prayers, my friend. I know it's been tough for you this past year. Um, we have Tiffany. We have Cameron. Um, she says, please tell Mother Barker I said hello and Merry Christmas. Oh, that is so sweet, Cameron. Hannah, can you do that for us? That would be so sweet. Let Grandma know that people are thinking of her, okay? Um, I'm about 450, 500 miles removed from them right now. Um, back home in Maryland and enjoying every minute of it. I enjoy every minute of South Carolina too, but it's just nice being back in my place, you know. Um, I even cleaned some bathrooms this morning. It was actually, dare I say it, a pleasant thing to to get to get things cleaned up in in, in better order. Uh, okay, enough of that. Um, Pat Dancer is is here. She says hi, all you early birds, and um, Amy. And Marie Proudfoot, hey Marie, my South Carolina friend, and uh, Wanda the backwards wrong side crochet. <laughs> I love that Wanda. Uh, hello, my friend, praying for you. Hope things are are going going better this week, um, this weekend, and stay safe out there. Hope you are feeling better yourself as well. Um, and we have Angie and everything just jumped. Okay, there we go. Angie and from Chicago, Judy from Brazelton, Georgia, uh, Melanie, um, Kelly from Tucson, Kimberly from Richmond and, um, Love to Craft is watching from California. We have Mary, um, from Crystal Coast of North Carolina. Oh, that's a beautiful place. I honeymooned not too far from there many years ago, Mary. Um, we have Twyla, um, Eric. And Norma, um, and see Donna Doolittle, what a great name, from Oregon. Uh, Thora from Iceland. Oh my goodness, that is that is so cool. You guys are on my bucket list. I want to go to Iceland sometime with my camera. And I'm if I ever do get to Iceland, you guys are going to think I'm weird, but I'm going to take a couple of cameras. I'm going to take the camera my Uncle Lou gave me. It's a film camera. And I've learned more about photography as far as the digital age goes. And I'm understanding better why film still has the edge over digital. So I, if I ever go travel internationally, I'm going to be the geek with about two, a couple cameras hanging around my neck. And one's going to have film and one's going to be digital. So we'll see. And we'll, we'll put it to the test. But 
I'm old school too. I just need to make sure I have the automatic uh, gadget trees with it now. I used to shoot, let me, I don't know, I'm going to geek out a little bit here. I used to shoot with a camera called a Pentax K1000 in case you oldie but goldies out there know what I'm talking about. There was nothing automatic about it. Um, you had to set the f-stop and, and the, the shutter speed and everything for every shot. It had a built-in light meter, but it more of an old-fashioned one. And I tell you, I got the best pictures ever. I used that camera um, all through my children's uh, childhood and um, got some really fantastic pictures. So, yeah, I'm all digital now, but um, if I can find some film, I think I'm going to do a little bit of investing just on the side whenever I do travel, you know. Put, put a little bit of money into it and see what we get. But but anyway, uh, but now nowadays I, I do have to have the automatic features because I have contact lenses and glasses here. So there's no way I can get the focus on it without the electronics. But um, the camera my Uncle Lou who gave me before he passed away is a Canon AE something or other. Anyway, but it's it's a really nice camera, has all the automatic features, and so I'm really excited about that. So maybe all that to, all that all that spurned just by seeing Thora's uh, post from Iceland. <laughs> if I go to Ireland, I'm going to do the same thing. If I go anywhere outside of my little two places here, I'm going to be taking all that with me. Okay, so we have was it Rochelle from Pennsylvania. Um, Trish from Winnipeg, Manitoba. Wow, I bet you guys are cold because it was cold here in Maryland this morning. It was in the 20s. Um, warming up a little bit, but brr, I've got two layers on, as you can see. And this is one of my uh, my alpaca, the uh, my first sweater project, um, alpaca wool. And uh, it, it feels pretty good. <laughs> um, and I did leave the heat on just if you hear a bunch of uh, external noises going on here. It's because I left the heat on today. I didn't turn it off. And uh, I, yeah, anyway, um, let's see. We have Racine. She says it's uh, hello. And, and it just skipped on me. Hold on a second. I am so slow. She said it's an honor to be here to enjoy you and all that you share with us today. Oh, thank you, Racine. I hope you enjoy. Um, we have Pat. We have um, Jacqueline from Los Angeles, Maryland, from Kansas. Um, Gail, she says, hello to all. Have a blessed day. Thank you, Gail. And Kelly um, says, good morning. How are you doing, beautiful? Oh, I am doing well. It's been a very productive week. So um, didn't do a lot of crocheting, but we've got a lot of computer work done on the project we're going to talk about in just a bit. Um, so I I'm feeling pretty good and pretty thankful for all that, you know, being able to do and, and for my husband's help in doing it. Um, oh, Swati's in the chat. Hey, Swati. She says, dual duty today between work and this. <laughs> well, hope you don't get in trouble listening, Swati. Um, we have Jane and from Massachusetts, uh, Shamim and Diana from Ohio, Angie from Clayton, North Carolina, Yvette from Canada, Suzanne from Sudbury, Ontario, uh, Crystal from Kentucky, the Bluegrass State, and Tracy, Ashley from Rock Hill, South Carolina, um, Leanne from the S Isle of Wight, wow, and um, Rebecca from Missouri, wow, a lot of people, you guys are from all over the place, that's great, um, we have Brenda Young and Kelly Hart, she said she tried to send me a picture of the third leaf bag, but I couldn't send it from my computer. What am I doing wrong? Uh, Kelly, I am the wrong person to ask. Uh, I would just try again, try sending an email, or you could even try posting it to my Bonnie Bay Crochet Facebook page. Links are always in the video description below. Um, we have Johnny from Florida. She says He says, Hello, Bonnie and buddies. Happy Friday. Cold front in South Florida feels good. Reminds me of springtime in Jersey. Oh, I hope you guys are okay down there, Johnny. I just know that whenever we got a cold front, we would freeze. Um, partly because we didn't have heat, because we didn't need heat. But for like, you know, five days out of the year. Um, I hope you can enjoy that. Get out all your sweaters and everything you've made. Um and let's see, Mary Ford says, Pentax, yes, I have a 1983 version of the Canon set everything. <laughs> yeah, I think I got my camera, I believe it was in about that time. I think I got it as a Christmas present. And I think it was around 1981 or 82. My parents gave it to me. 
Uh, kind of a funny story here, if my sister Brenda's listening, my dream camera at the time was the Canon, I think it was an AE-1. Um, and that was like my dream machine. And um, so anyway, my parents bought both, both of their children, myself and my sister, a camera. Brenda got the AE-1, I got the Pentax. But you know, it was a blessing in disguise because it really did help me to get really, really good at photography and understanding light and everything better. I guess God knew that I would need to understand more of that getting into the future, you know, with video editing and photography. And I mean, who would have known? But, um, but yeah, so, you know, fast forward about 45 years and now I've got both. Actually, my son has one is sitting up kind of like an, a, it's a museum piece um, uh, on a shelf in his home. Um, I'm never going to be able to use it again because of my eyesight. But anyway, this is supposed to be about crochet, right? <laughs> it actually technically is because uh, photography really does play a big part in what I do. Um, a lot bigger part than I ever would have dreamed. Okay. Um, Kelly wants to know my email address. It should be in the video description below, but let me go ahead and type it in for you below here, Kelly. Mm. Ah. Got to get my, there, I just typed it in, Kelly, if you need that. Um, Brad's mom is in the chat. Uh, says, hi, everybody. Happy Friday and many Advent blessings to you. Thank you so much. It's it's a really strange Advent season, but but it's still good. We're determined, like we talked about last week, determined to celebrate. <laughs> Mary says, yeah, Canon AE something. I think it was an AE one, but I don't know. Can't trust the brain these days. Um See, Heather Washington, your comment just jumped there in front of me. Ah, she says he's from Colorado and it's snowing. Wow, enjoy that. Oh, I would love to be in Colorado in the snow. I wouldn't mind being in Maryland in the snow. I haven't gotten any yet this year, guys, but part of me is okay with that too. <laughs> um, we have Donna Sperling and we have Mabel. She says, hello from 65 degrees Southern Ohio. Very unusual for this time of the year. Love your patterns and seeing you featured in Crochet World, my favorite crochet magazine. Thank you, Mabel. Yeah, this is um, the magazine. I did get my copy uh, when I got some designs back. I'm going to show you in just a second. I was hoping to have some giveaways for you all today. They are in the mail. They're between Indiana and Maryland somewhere. The, only the postman knows. So um, I was going to do a giveaway today, but I'm going to hold off until next week. So that's something you can look forward to next week. Um, I just didn't want to, you know, I'll promise a giveaway and have them not come this week. You know, I don't want you all to have to wait any longer than you need to. So possibly next week we'll have a giveaway. I'll have about three copies to give away of this magazine. And let me tell you, uh, I promise I'm not going to be real sales pitchy here, but there are so many really fun designs in here. I mean, there's a really cool sweater. Um, and Jackie Dougherty has done just a fabulous job. And for those of you who like plaid, it's a really pretty plaid bag. Um, I'm going to show you the designs I have in just a second. I'm just going to show them to you up close and personal. Um, but look at this. Um, this is beautiful by my friend, Catherine White. It's a beautiful doily with um, Irish crochet flowers and, and leaves and things. Really, really nice. She does amazing work. Um, little bracelets, um, scrappy afghans, lots of scrappy kind of stuff. Um, and you saw the cover. There's some really cool hot pads. I thought these were really pretty. You can use these to use up, you know, your extra cotton that you might have around. I've got couple of bolts of, of that sitting right there. Um, so lots of scrappy ideas um, in here. And here's the interview that I was telling you about uh, with my friend Jennifer Ryan. I don't know if you all had a chance to, to look at part of the interview, just to let you know, this is just one part of it. And it's actually three pages long. Here's a picture of my sweetheart. And that was um, taken back in 2012. But anyway, um, there's an interview on my homepage and there's a link in there to a continuation or like some outtakes and some other parts of the interview that are not featured in either of these two places that are on Jennifer Ryan's. It's Jennifer E. Ryan, the Celtic Knot Crochet or 
um, Celtic Knot Crochet. You know, you can check it. Please check out her YouTube channel. She's in the very beginnings of building her channel right now. Um, so she really, really needs subscribers. Okay, now also in this edition, I was I was um, kind of excited about this. They've republished an old, an older, kind of an oldie but goldie. Um, this is the Hills of Ireland throw. Maybe some of you have already done this one, but they've gone ahead and brought that one back for this edition since it's talking about the Irish crochet. Um, I do not have a video on that. Um, I may look into doing that in the future sometime, but it's not gonna be the near future. Um, I'm gonna show you, and I'll go ahead and show you the pictures anyway. I'm gonna show you these in just a second. Very easy. Uh, mitts and headband. You can do both or just one, you know, just the headband. And um, you can, these use a, a sock weight yarn, I believe it is. Uh, let's see. Yeah, it's a, it's a super fine or number one sock weight. And um, the yarn I used, I'll, I'll talk about that in a minute. It's called Elfin Tweed by a company called uh, Knit One Crochet Two. But as you know, with a lot of these, you can use whatever yarn uh, of that particular size, you know, that you may have in your stash or, you know, that's available in your area. And this is one I'm really excited about. Well, two of them, but this one here is the honeycomb scarf. I'm going to show that to you in just a second and makes a really great men's scarf. Um, it has, I think kind of masculine looking cables. Um, a woman can wear it as well. So I know a lot of times people are asking me, you know, what do you have for a guy? And I'm like, well, I'll have to work on that. Um, and let's see if there's anything, there's a bunch of stuff in here. Um, and that that's, there, anyway, that's that's available now on newsstands where these things are sold. Um, I haven't gotten my subscription copy yet in the mail, but that should be coming to you all shortly if you're a subscriber. Okay, um, well, let me go ahead and show you some of these things. I do want to get back to greeting you guys in the chat there, but I'm going to have to just take a little bit of a break here from it. All right, so this is the yarn that I said it's um, Knit One Crochet Two. It's an Elven Tweed. It's a it's a worsted, not a worsted. It's a, a number one, and what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, it's merino, super wash merino wool, and it's a simple cable. It's just the four the four post cable, and, and these are just post stitches here. Okay, very easy to make. Um, and, you know, it's just, it's just, you know, going back and forth, back and forth, and then you join. This is the inside. I usually don't do this, but, you know, you always want to hide your seams, but, you know, then you join with a seam, which you can, of course, wear in the back where nobody can see. Um, and these are really fun. This is a pair of of mitts that you can wear and again the same pattern and and these are are crocheted in the round and then when you get to the thumb hole you just skip about eight stitches chain eight and then just continue on in the pattern and then when you come back here you just stat you know do those eight stitch pattern right there and it's trimmed with the little eyelet eyelet trim. So these are actually kind of fun. And what's really nice about these is it does keep your hands warm, but yet you still have the use of your fingertips. Um, I was driving the other day and it was cold and I have a pair of um, gloves on, but they're so thick. I felt like I didn't have a, the control I needed of the, of the steering wheel. So I'm going to have to try these to see if that will be better for me when I'm driving. Um, or maybe I just need to get some with different, different fabric. Uh, okay, so here is the honeycomb scarf. And let's see if it has the yarn on here. Hold on a second. Let me look up the yarn because you're going to want to know what this is. Ah, oh, this feels really nice too. Okay, this is the honeycomb scarf. And it has the ribbing, double ribbing on the edge and on, on the bottom and then it has the the basket weave on the side and see the honeycomb stitch here and then trimmed with the basket weave let me let me look up the yarn real quick i know it's barocco i think it's ultra alpaca but let me confirm that because i know people are going to want to know 
Okay. Of course, the pages that I need are stuck together. Okay, here we go. Okay. Okay, this is um, Barocco Ultra Alpaca. It's a blend of alpaca and, and um, wool. So it's a 50-50, I believe, on those. It's a DK weight. So if you want to make this, and let's say you don't want to go out and buy alpaca or whatever, um, this, does, this does feel really nice, by the way. Um, but if you have DK weight anything, you know, you can make that. I have some like DK weight yarn here left over from a project. This is um, Baroque, vintage Barocco, no, Barocco vintage DK, which is um, a more economically priced yarn, um, but still very good quality. It's 50% acrylic, 50% uh, wool or super, you know, no, I don't know if it's super, I think it might be super wash, but anyway, it's um, half wool, half acrylic holds up really well. You can put it in a washer machine and I think it actually holds up better than 100% super wash wool, but that's just my opinion. Um, so anyway, so this is the honeycomb scarf and wow, this this really this really is a nice color too. It's, you know, kind of a, a nice manly color as well. So those are in the Crochet World magazine plus the Afghan plus many other really fun things. Um, like I say, Jackie Doherty just is really, really knocking it out of the park. If you ask me, she's just put so many really fun projects in there. Um, and the scrap Afghans are really, really fun too. Let me get back to saying, Hey, to some of you, uh, let's see. Well, maybe I'm not too terrible. Well, I'm probably a little bit behind. Okay. Um, we have Irene, Irene, um, says, hi, God bless everyone, Bonnie. I just made a baby blanket for a friend of mine and she absolutely loves it. Thank you. I love the way you teach how to do. So it's so easy and simple. Well, thank you, Irene. I'm so glad that you were able to bless your friend that way that I love making baby blankets. Um, we have Yvette and um, Linda Jones. She says three in a row. Wow, miracle. Wish my closest cousin gets a miracle to survive this horrid virus. Oh dear. Please pray for her. Let me write that down, Linda. Let's put Linda's cousin. Okay, I'll write that down. Um, and we have Susie. She says, hey, from snowy Spokane Valley. Wow. Um, yeah, I love snow. Yeah, um, and thank you, Yvette, for your kind words there. And Carol from Kentucky. Um, Deborah from... Is it Gardener, Maine? Monica from the Netherlands. Um, is it Medalist? Medalist, am I saying that right? Um, love all your work from New York. Oh, stay safe there in New York. I, I understand some of my friends in the city are on lockdown right now, are going to be. Um, Irene, she says, by the way, I am from Perth, Amboy, New Jersey. Wow. And um, Kelly, she says, I like the shawl behind you. That you made. I don't have Facebook. I'm not allowed to have Facebook. That's okay, Kelly. You don't need Facebook. Um, uh, let's see. Yeah, this is, uh, I, I mentioned this last week. This is not going to be on my public YouTube channel, but this is one of the, the things that I am reserving for a future platform that my husband tells me that we are very close, that um, this, is, this is going to be a platform I talked about this a little bit um, last week. I'll just mention it again. It's going to be uh, a streaming service, like one of those things. It's going to uh, offer all my crew. Not well. It's going for at first. It's going to be uh, the most popular stuff that, or, or the really good stuff <laughs> from my channel. It's not going to be everything because I actually need to go back on my channel because there are a lot of videos that are probably outdated that just need to be taken down. But um, the, the best of that. Plus, um, we are going to be adding the cable crochet made easy videos that have never been public um, and some brand new cabling designs that are coming out. They've been designed. I just need to finish thing, things up and um, those will also be on this new. It's going to be subscription based. It's going to be uninterrupted and commercial free. Um, you know, none of those 
pop-ups. Um, you don't have to worry about content issues. If you have children who, you know, who want to learn, um, you don't have to worry about, you know, the commercials or anything that's questionable that will interrupt them. Um, I'm going to be offering some exclusive behind the scenes videos. Those are to be coming in the future. Not everything's going to be there right away. Um, it is a work in progress. And believe me, it has been a lot of work so far. I mean, I <laughs> almost felt like I needed to get my hand x-rayed. I just was working it so hard just on computer work. I mean, I had to do some crocheting just to relax the hand because, um, there are so many little bits and pieces that have to happen for each video. Um, so, and I'm also going to be offering some exclusive crochet courses in the future. They're not there now, but they will be in the future as time goes by. Um, and, you know, we're just going to see how this goes. The cost of this is going to be about a cup of coffee a month, um, $4.95 and for now. That's about, you know, we're going to probably keep it in the range of what coffee costs um, to keep up with inflation or deflation or whatever. Um, but, but that's kind of what our thinking is on that. And as soon as we go live, which we're hoping to be sometime next week, don't know exactly when, um, but we will announce that in our newsletter. So if you haven't signed up for my newsletter, there's a link in the video description below. Um, I don't, like I told you last week, I'm not a spam bot. I don't send out a lot of stuff. Um, just when I have something to share with you all, like a special or, um, you know, something new coming. And this is going to be a big deal for us. So um, this is going to, I think, really potentially help Bonnie Bay Crochet to grow and do things that we've wanted to do, but just have been constrained. Um, it's maybe even going to help us get some equipment um, that we've needed um, to, to just, you know, up the game just a little bit in video production. And it may actually help me to bring somebody on, like one of my daughters, or maybe both, I don't know, um, as, a, as a real employee um, to kind of help me in a lot of the work. I mean, they've been helping me on the side quite a bit for years, but I mean, really, really bring somebody in. Um, but anyway, just that's a little bit of the dreams that we've got going here. Um, right now, I'm pretty much a one-person operation. <laughs> so if you ever have to, a question on social media and you're not getting a quick response, whether it's on YouTube or whatever, um, you know, try to get me at my at my um, email, bonniebayatme.com, and I'll try to be as prompt as I can, but just know that I'm, it's, it's me. It's not a secretary or, or a team behind me or anything. So, so anyway. That's that, and I'll let you know as soon as that happens. Um, so, yeah, let me let me go ahead and catch up on some of your comments here because this this is fun for me, guys. I love just seeing what you're doing, and you know, just 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 love your spirit. Um, do 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 do. Okay, you have this. Yeah, do do do. So that one, that one, that one. Um, okay. Um, Mary Ford says, I made your Uptown hat in pink, red, heart, soft essentials and about to start the Uptown tote. I'm waiting for the gopher faux and the handles. Yeah, I would love to see that, Mary. I hope that yarn is working for you. Um, and I hope you enjoy the gopher faux stuff. I'm, I still got to make some, some, uh, Christmas presents out of my leftover gopher faux yarn for the kitties in our family. Um, I actually bought the catnip this week. I'm going to do the little, remember the little tribbles here? Um, this made out of the gopher faux yarn. These have lavender in them. Ah, very nice. But I'm going to fill some with uh, catnip and give them to the kitties for Christmas and uh, watch it. Watch them have fun. <laughs> oh, isn't that terrible? Okay. Um, Lyndon Jones says it's been in the 20s, but it's 40 today in Portland, fluctuating from cold to warm. <clears throat> yeah, it's, it's been like that here. Um, and Kelly wants to know, what does Uptown Hat look like? Um, Kelly, there's a video on my homepage. So maybe when we're done with the live, if you want to go back to the homepage and, and look at the, just, just put in a little spyglass question uh thing up, up on the top there, Uptown hat, and you'll see the hat and the, uh, the bag to go with it. It's, I think I left that in South Carolina. I'm sorry. 
I'm, I'm kind of split, you know, between two locations here. I don't really have that to show. Um, uh, Judy says, oh, we just got some, hold on. Da, da, da. We got a lot. I don't know why this does this. It looks like I don't have many people. Then all of a sudden I get like 50 comments at once. Um, wow. I'm really behind. <laughs> um, hold on. Where was I? Okay, there we go. Wow, I'm like really behind. Um, Judy from Iowa, uh, she says, it's getting colder there. They've been blessed with warm weather in the 40s, which is warm for them. Stay safe, y'all. Absolutely. Um, uh, thank you, Anne, for the reminder. If you guys want to hit that thumbs up and the subscribe button, if you haven't subscribed already, um, that way you won't miss out on any notifications. Uh, also, the other notification bell, I think, is what gives you the notifications. Um, but yeah, the thumbs up, that kind of helps the algorithm somehow behind the scenes. Um, don't ask me to explain, but it does help. Um, and Kelly says, do I put your name first and type in the rest? Uh, if you're on my home page, you can look it up there, or you can just do the general YouTube search. If you just put Bonnie Bay, Crochet, and then Uptown Hat, it should come up for you, Kelly. Um Okay, we have Norma from Long Island, Julie from Louisville, uh, Discovering Hope is in our chat, and um, Leanne, um, thanks, glad you're back this week, and, and Mabel, she says, how ama amazing how God prepares us for the things we will need to do before we are even aware. Oh, Mabel, you are so right. I cannot, I, I could write a book about that, just, I had would have had no idea if you told me that I'd be a crochet designer. <laughs> I would just, no, there was, that wasn't even a thing, you know, when I was growing up. Um, but anyway, well, I guess it was for some, for a select few, but not like it is today. Um, we have Wanda Gordon says, we had a quick snow flurry on Monday. It's in the 60s. It, yep. She says, that's, that's North Carolina. Yep. That's South Carolina too. Uh, and South Florida as well. You know, if you don't like the weather, give it a minute. It'll change. <laughs> that's always the way it's been. Um, and let's see, Joanne says, uh, says, uh, I rather new to your channel. I have a question, your Celtic pattern books, which do you suggest for a beginner to the Celtic stitches? Oh, uh, good question. This one here, uh, cable crochet made easy, um, because it has all the, the videos. Um, and, and yes, there are people who have given me pretty bad reviews <laughs> saying that the links don't work. They do work. If you have ever have trouble getting to the links, just, just email me the problem with the links. If there are any, it's the font. Because as you know, ones look like L's, L's look like ones. Um, underscores look like spaces and people can get those confused. And if they don't get it right the first time, it's like, well, it's gotta be my fault somehow. But um, I'll, I'll definitely take my fault, my blame. But you know, it's like, well, actually it's, it is, accurate. Uh, my email is in the book. I tell people publicly constantly, contact me if you have any issues with that. I will respond to you probably within 24 hours or less. So, I mean, unless I'm, I don't know, out of the country, which you know is impossible right now. Um, so, so yeah, yeah, that's the one I'd recommend because I do take you step by step through the projects. It's not just stitch videos. It's, it's, it's complete uh, project videos. So that, that would be the one I would start with um, if, you, if you want a lot of video instruction. Um, otherwise, um, the green one behind me, Contemporary Celtic Crochet, is still one of my favorites because um, I, I, I just that's probably my favorite um, that I was able to work on to date. Um, we have Ush, Usha, if I'm saying that right. She says, hi, Bonnie. I'm, from, I'm Usha from UK. Oh, she says, I'm amazing. Oh, how sweet. <laughs> um, and she has learned a lot. And you keep up the good work. Thank you so much, my friend. That is so sweet of you to say that. Um, don't get to hear that very much. But it, that's really sweet of you guys. Um, Jane says, I did see the interview and loved it. Jennifer's work is awesome too. Yes, it is, Jane. And it's very unique. If you all learned to Celtic knots. And she does some beautiful, beautiful things. Um, Award-winning uh, crochet. So definitely check it out. She's the only one that I know of is, who does that, but those particular techniques. Um, let's see. Kimberly says it's cold in Richmond. Um, 
Thanks for helping with the questions there, Hannah. And we have L. Sheldon from North Carolina. And Tracy says she likes the gloves. Um, Wanda says she likes them. You always do such beautiful work. You are too kind, Wanda. So sweet, um, keeping us all supplied. Um, and Jane says, hi, everyone. Hope you're keeping well. Yes, yes, we are. And um, thank you guys for the comments on the scarf and the, the gloves. And, I mean, the, the mitts and the, the headband. Very easy stuff. Um, and Carol says, Wanda, I'm a left-handed backwards crocheter. <laughs> Well, thank you for saying that, Carol, because I wanted to make mention to, I mean, you you know this by following me on my channel here. I do left-handed crochets. Just to let you know, if you're a left-hander and you are interested in the subscription service that I was just talking about, um, everything is going to be right and left-handed. So you will have, um, the left-handed videos are going to be in a separate category so that you can find them more easily. So, and also so the right-handers don't have to sift through as many videos. Um, so we're really, really taking pains to to organize this in, in as, as best way as we can. Um, so just to let you know, you lefties are covered um, as much as we can. Everything I do for right-handed, I duplicate that for left-handed. Um, with this quick, you know, editing process, it, it's I, I do, can't do anything with my left hand other than support what my right hand is doing. But we do have the flipped image, and I'm told by left-handers that that does help. So just to let, a, let you know, put a little plug in there that we've got you left-handers covered. Um, you're the only people in your right mind, if you guys get that joke, but it's actually a true. <laughs> it's a biologically true. Um, we have Daisy in the chat from New Mexico. Um, she said, hope you remember me. I remember seeing your name in there, Daisy. It would be great if we could meet sometime. Um, we have Jana. She says, hello, everyone. Glad I made it. And um, let's see, Roxana likes the scarf. Thank you, Roxana. And um, Jane says she likes fingerless gloves for driving. Can't wait to get my copy. Those are beautiful patterns. Well, thank you, Jane. Those, those are very quick, too. They work up very quickly. And if you have any leftover you know, sock yarn in your stash, I believe one, one, like 400 to 425 yards will make, make the mitts and the headband. So just, uh, you know, about 400 yards, you'll, I think, covered on both of those projects. I, I think, um, L Sheldon says quick opinion, SC or slip stitch to put granny squares together preferences. Hmm. Um, it depends on what you're doing, uh, as far as, uh, the granny square stuff goes, uh, the slip stitch, you know, is going to leave like a little chain. It might leave less of a join if you want that. Um, you could also use a reverse single crochet, which is a neural stitch. If you're looking for that texture, or you can do the traditional whip stitch, which is you take your yarn needle and you just go round and around and around You're using a yarn needle and sewing those together. Um, that would be another option. And it really depends on your personal preference on what you're trying to do, whether you want, you know, whether you want the seam to show or if you're trying to disguise it. Um, back in the seventies, when they used to have the granny squares in the stores, when they used to have them in kits with all the different yarns, if you all remember that, I remember seeing them at GC, GC Murphy Company, at Zayers stores. Um, and I remember that the instructions for that were to just use the whip stitch and to sew them together because it was to minimize the join. So it, it really depends on, you know, what your preference is there. Um, uh, Kelly says she hopes it snows in Vail this Christmas. Oh, I would love to see another white Christmas. The only time I've had a white Christmas is... 1989 in South Carolina in Myrtle Beach. It was a freak thing, but it was like a, a nor'easter off the, the coast of the Carolinas. And it dumped about 18 inches of snow. <laughs> we had a hard time getting from um, Maryland uh, down to, to South Carolina. And I remember driving in a very tiny Honda Civic. I mean, very tiny. It was like a like an early 80s Honda Civic. And... Um, the alternator was in the process of going bad on us. And it was crazy. We had, there was a truck that jackknifed on a bridge. So we had to take an alternate route, even getting in into Conway. It was uh, crazy. And the windshield wipers are going eh, 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 like this. Uh, so it was, it was a crazy time, but it was wonderful to have that snow. 
We just got from Tell Air. We just got a a gift, a five dollar gift. Thank you from Tell Air Raw. Says hello from Cold Maryland. Merry Christmas and Happy New Year's. Well, thank you so much. So we will start that into our new. Uh, I'll write that down into our new fund, and once we ramp up to uh, you know a hundred dollars, we will do another song for you guys. So um, just to let you all know that is a, a super chat and whenever you want to donate to the super chat you're welcome to i'm never putting pressure on anybody for that but when you want to do that what i'm doing is that money is going to the shriners children's hospital and uh something near and dear to our heart here at bonnie bay crochet and so um when we get to a hundred dollars i will come up with a fun song for you guys i know you might have to hold your hear ears but um but um, yeah, and I still have something in the works with my neighbor. I need to check with her. And I'm hoping before Christmas we'll be able to do that for you. Um, I just have to see how her health is before I can, you know, confirm that. But I will I will get something in the works for you. I do have something in mind that's brand new, but I haven't written it out yet. But I'm going to work on that later this afternoon. Um, Barbara says, I use, I use, I guess your beanie hat all the time. I love it and no seam. I needed a new one this week without a pom-pom to wear while I sleep. It's cold on the boat. Oh, my goodness. That's right. You're living on a boat, Barbara. That is amazing. Um, yeah, and guys, if you're looking for an easy hat pattern, there is one. and uh, It's an easy beginner hat pattern on my homepage. Um, you're going to have to look that one up. And, uh, yeah, it, it's yellow. It's a little different than this one. Um, it's, it's yellow. It's very easy. It's just doing... Um, using a stitch marker and you just go round and round and round and there's no there are no joins so you don't have the seam um, Archer Nay says no one believes that I made your designs they think it's store bought my nephew's wife gave away a project I made for her daughter because it wasn't homemade I get very frustrated oh you're kidding wow well I guess that's a compliment thank you um but yeah, wow. Well, that that's good because I I kind of like it when things don't look like it's totally obvious that you just made something, you know. But um, but on the other hand, it should look better <laughs> if it's homemade or handmade, right? Than if it's just you know store bought. But wow. Well, that that's really something. Um, we have see Judy's in our chat and Hannah says. Da -da -da. I don't believe you. Okay, I have to ask you about that, Hannah. Yeah, okay. Um, what is that shawl called? Okay, this isn't out yet. I mean, like I said, this is um, this is going to be on my subscription-based platform. But um, this is going to be this is Bonnie's woodland cabled wrap. Um, it 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 can be worn. I I'm going to be wearing mine as an asymmetrical poncho like this. You can undo the buttons and wear it just just as a wrap, as a stole, um, you know, whatever, as a as a super thick scarf if you need. Um, but it's I think more of a stole than a scarf. But um, a lot of different ways, a lot of different things you can do with it. Um, and the yarn is I, I used is uh, a slightly heavier worsted weight yarn um, by Knit Picks. It's called Woodland Tweed. And it is a blend of alpaca and wool with some tweed. And I love it. It just has a little bit of, you know, kind of like this. The um, This is also Knit Picks yarn. This is um, City Tweed DK. But it just has a little bit, you know, of a hint of the tweed in it. And I just, I kind of fell in love. I got smitten with that. And I, I have some extra in my stash. So I may end up making a hat or something to match it. The, I have to tell you, though, the original yarn that I used for this was um, an alpaca wool blend that I got when my husband and I were in Australia. And I bought it in a store in the Blue Mountains of Australia. And that yarn was super sweet. But obviously, I can't use that yarn to design for everybody else to enjoy because the yarn is just not available in the States. And if it were, it would be about three times what I paid for it just in shipping alone. So I always have to keep that in mind when I do design work is, you know, it's nice to buy extra special yarn, but I can't design with it. 
I have to make it out of something that is accessible to more people, especially in the U.S. because my audience is um, not, ex it, it's, it's definitely worldwide, but um, the majority are U.S. based. And I want to make sure that you all are taken care of and, and can do things. And, and that's also another reason why I love using um, uh, Lovecrafts is it's a UK based, but yet they have warehouses both in UK and in the US. And of course, UK, um, they, they also serve many other places in Europe. So it's, it's accessible to them. So anyway, oh, thank you, Amy. Amy added another $4.99. I'm going to go ahead and write that down so I don't lose track because I am not a mathematician and I can lose track in a heartbeat. Um, Let's see, we have Terry Redmond. She says, good day, I'm Bonnie and Hannah from San Diego. Hope you and your family are well. Yeah, we are doing very well. Thank you, Terry. Um, I hope you're doing well. Um, yeah, let's see. Da -da -da. We have Carol Beck. She says, I'm planning to make the wheat field cape real soon. Yay. Well, definitely post when you can, Carol. That would be great. Um, and Archer Nace says, Okay. Yeah, she says she, okay, they're having a conversation about someone gave something away because uh, they thought it was uh, store-bought. And she says she don't make things for them anymore. <laughs> um, yeah, you probably want to maybe just buy them something. <laughs> um, yeah. Um, and Amy says, oh, protect those hands, Bonnie. They are like gold. Oh, thank you, Amy. I, I've actually been, been a little concerned. My thumbs have been kind of weak for a while. I, I'm not sure why. Um, but, but yeah, I've been, been real careful and trying to be a little more humble. I was always kind of one of those gals with the bra, I'm like, oh, I can do it. I can lift it. I can carry it. You know, I am really quick now to defer to like carrying heavy things and doing stuff like that. Um, especially if it's, if it's going to hurt my hands, it's like, you know, can you guys help me? I, I, I'm okay with that now. I mean, my pride has, you know, taken a few notches down, but it's okay. I can't do everything and I'm not even going to try. Um, but I do want to protect the hands and, and the back, uh, <laughs> for sure. Um, and Kelly says she'll be watching for the courses. Kelly, those are going to be my top priority to get those knocked out. I do, I do have some that I've already taught. I just need to organize a lot of the videos. Um, but I do want to do want to make it easier. It's particularly for beginning crocheters. I, you know, if you're a beginner crocheter and you look on YouTube, I mean, it's, it's, it's like swimming in an ocean. I mean, there's like, where do you even start? So what I want to also do is I am very close, you know, to developing a beginning crochet class where a person can sit down with me and I can say, okay, do this. And once you get to this done, do this. And then here are the stitches. And, and, you know, and once you get this, okay, try this project over here and then I'll have a video for that project, you know? So, you know, just to be able to step through building your skills as an absolute beginner. So I'm really excited about that most of all, um, because you got to start somewhere. And if someone hadn't sat down with me, you know, 50 years ago and helped me to learn this, I, I would not have ever learned. And gee, I, I can't imagine <laughs> what I'd be doing with myself. Um, Let's see. Uh, thank you guys for your comments. I'm going to skip through some. Amy says she has a prayer request. My mother-in-law who has Alzheimer's has been diagnosed with COVID. Let me write this down. Okay. Um, prognosis is not good. So mostly prayer for her reduced suffering in the family as we cope with this. Okay. I've got it written down, Amy, so that I will, I will be aware to remember that this week. Thank you for, for letting us know. Um, and I do, do hope that that goes well. Um, I understand what you're saying though. Um, my husband lost um, his uncle this week, um, in a similar, I don't think COVID was involved, but, but the, uh, the dementia was definitely there. So, you know, I understand it's, I, it, it's, you know, it's, it's sad, but you know, on, on the other hand, it's, you know, it's kind of a blessing too. He, he loved the Lord. So, I mean, um, you know, it's not like we'll never see him again, but, um, but it is sad. It is sad for the family to say goodbye like that. And this is a hard time whew, for all of us, you know, for some of us, you know, um, 
as we come upon the holidays. And I saw an excellent article the other day by Desiring God Ministries, if you all, you know, follow John Piper at all. And it was a really, really sweet article just about, you know, not minimizing people's hurts during this, this holiday season. Um, I know it's, it's been hard for our family, but, but, you know, it's, this has been easier than, than the, you know, each year gets a little bit easier, but this was going to be the second anniversary uh, coming up in, in several days of losing my mom. And um, we, you know, had her memorial service on Christmas Eve morning. I mean, so it's, it's really hard not to think of that, you know, during the holidays, but, but, you know, there's a lot of hope too built in. And I'm going to read something in a little bit just to try to kind of refresh on the hope thing because, you know, that's the whole point. But yet, you know, definitely be patient with people and with yourself and, and family member who just, just have a struggle, you know, a hard time uh, during this time. And, and, you know, don't ignore it. Um, I don't know. Uh, and I know sometimes it does help to talk about the people we miss and have lost and, um, you know, definitely be all ears and, um, you know, don't try to fix people. You know, if people cry, it's okay. It's, it's a good thing. It's, um, you know, it's, it's showing that you care and that you love. And, uh, so anyway, just, just to throw that out there, um, you know, just, you know, be sensitive. Um, people who are single, who are going to be alone. I mean, um, I love my sister. She's, she's single. She's been single her whole life. She's a wonderful, wonderful gal. Um, uh, it's just, you know, it's hard during the holidays. Uh, she's, you know, a lot of single people have had to be isolated this whole year in a way that they've never, you know, had to deal with. And then, you know, the holidays just making it that much more pronounced. So maybe, you know, if you think about somebody in your life like that, you know, reach out to them, you know, bless them, send them a card. I don't know, bring them some brownies or something. I don't know. Um, send yarn <laughs> if they're a yarn person. Um, but but you, you guys have it all down. I know you probably, you know, do that all the time. I'm preaching to the choir here, but um, that article was just a really good, fresh reminder for me too, just to be sensitive to people and, um, you know, just to be caring. I, and I know you do that. But I'm speaking to myself too. It was just a good reminder. Um, and thank you, Archer and Ace, for your kind, kind word there. Um, uh, she says her, her mom has, is gone. Thank you. That's, that's really sweet that what you said there. Um, yeah. Yeah. I miss, I miss my mom, but it's just amazing that I get to help care for my mother-in-law. And, um, it's been, uh, I can't even talk about it. I'll get, I'll lose it if I do, but it's just been a great season. It's been, you know, it's been challenging in some ways with the COVID and everything, but it's, it's been a good thing. It, you look at things differently after you've experienced loss. You know, things are not as, you know, as, as inconvenient um, as, you know, life changes can be. Um, yeah, thank you all for praying for, um, for, for Amy's. I see them seeing the comments. You're praying for her. Thank you so much. Um, and Kathleen says, hi, Bonnie. I'm new here. I made the Hills of Ireland last year for my granddaughter for her birthday and she loved it oh that is so wonderful kathleen i had so much fun doing that afghan um and then i had to give it away because it it went to the publishing company so i may have to do a video just so i can have my own <laughs> um and thank you amy again for that that um the, the super chat donation there um and Leslie Oliver is here. She says, hi, Bonnie, just woke up. It's 4.30 a.m. Glad I made it. I hope everyone is well. Um, yeah, it looks like the weather is warm. Looks like uh, Mexico has been fighting a fire all week with Smoky in South Dakota. Wow, yeah, lots going on out there. Um, Amy says, uh, she was talking to Judy, I made a crochet version of a tension ring from a video on YouTube and just couldn't get the feel of it. Yeah, you know, sometimes these things click and sometimes they don't with, with anybody's video, really. Um, we have Virginia from Vernal, Utah. And I see Charlotte says, hey, Bonnie, I hope you're having a wonderful day. This is Charlotte from upstate South Carolina. I am working on the colorful cable's throat. Oh, thank you, Charlotte. That is great. I'd love to see it when you're done. I haven't been to Charlotte in a long time. Um, I remember going to uh, 
was it Carol was it Carowinds? Carowinds, is that the name of the Carowinds there? Many, 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 many years ago. I remember losing my wallet on <laughs> one of the rides. Ah, oh, the funny things we remember. I can't remember what we had for dinner yesterday, but I can remember stuff like that. Crazy. Um Emily wants to know, how's the new design coming? Well, Emily, um, she's the one who provided me that gorgeous uh, yarn that I showed you in, in weeks past. It's coming along well. I just need to do a little bit of uh, filming and uh, I'm within two inches, about that much of the design being done. So uh, then of course, once I do that, I need to edit the, the film. I need to edit the video and then I'll need to write the pattern um, so it may take me a little bit still, but I'm hoping to get that out to you before the end of the year. Um, hey, Lynn. Lynn Guider is in the, the chat. And um, let's see. And Preston is in the chat. And let's see. Yeah, Hannah says, crying is good relief to release stress and tension. Yes, it is. Um, all right. Well, let me go ahead. Uh, let's see. Okay, thanks. Emily's saying that um, she's gotten in touch with my friend and Ang fellow designer Karen Hooley, and um, they're going to be putting a kit together um, in January. So that that's going to be cool. Um, hope that works well for you, Emily. Um, I'm sure that that'll be great. Um, so those of you want to check out Emily's uh, website, it's lambshot, lambshopkits.com. If you want to see what she's got there, she's mostly got knitting right now, but she, we're going to be working hard to add some crochet projects that'll knock your socks off. Ha ha ha. <laughs> um, anyway, um, Emily says, take Christmas off. It comes after the new year's. That's okay. Okay. Well, we'll see. I don't know what my travel plans are yet. So after the holidays might actually be the busier time. Um, and Melanie says, because someone you love is in heaven, there's a little heaven in your home. Always remember that. Thank you, Melanie. That's really sweet. Okay, we have T. Air T. Arab T. Arab says, I need a prayer request for my aunt who we just found out has cancer. Let me go ahead and write that down. Okay. Um, I hope I didn't. Okay. Well, I'm just going to go forward guys. Uh, yeah. Okay. Well, let me go ahead. I wanted to show you a couple other goodies. I posted about this uh, yesterday and again, this is not to be a salesman or anything like that, but I saw this on sale. It's not on sale now. Um, but if you guys have ever seen these, I know some of you love these and, and some of you are like, what in the world is that for? <laughs> I was in the category of what in the world was that for not too long ago. So I'm going to show you. These are yarn, bowl, yarn bowls. And this one is just gorgeous. Um, this was kind of an early Christmas present from me to me, in case any of you all ever do that. Um, it's made out of maple wood. And it's beautiful. It's nice and soft and, and, and polished. And what this is for is when you're crocheting, you can put your yarn ball in there and and when you pull it, this little thing will kind of help keep the ball in place. And you see that? So it doesn't roll all over the floor. I guess you could stick it in these holes, but I probably wouldn't. Now I know sometimes um, people say, well, I don't really like the string coming through here. Well, if you don't like it coming through there, you just turn the ball around and it just still comes out and it, it turns very nicely will probably drive your cat absolutely nuts if you have a cat. But um, let me show you also what it's for. It's also the perfect shape for these. Um, as you know, when you buy the yarn that's not, you know, your Red Heart, Lion Brand stuff that's already factory wound, a lot of times it comes in hanks like this that has to be wound. And, you know, sometimes people will wind it by hand in, in balls. But I'm going to show you what I use in just a second. Um, but when I wind it on my Swift and Ball wind, Winder, I end up with something like this. And I always save the label and put it in the middle. And, and that way I know what the, the, you know, what the yarn is made of and, you know, the brand and so forth. Because I'm not going to remember most of that. But it's just a perfect size 
to go right in there. And it, you know, it keeps the yarn, you know, from getting all over your carpet and, and everything. Um, yeah, someone says a kettle is also fantastic. Yeah, I mean, you don't need a fancy bowl. You can just use, you know, a, a container or even a cooking bowl if you want. But um, this is just something a little, something fun for me to keep that is only designated for my yarn. It's also great when I travel in a car too. It's small enough I can carry. Yeah, so Judy says I use a box. Yeah, that's fine. I mean, you can definitely find something more economical for sure. But um, I just thought you might want to see my little Christmas present from me to me. And, and again, I'm showing this to you because, you know, a few years ago, I well, several years ago, I didn't know what a lot of this stuff was. And one of you guys, I don't know who, somebody either on Facebook or on my YouTube channel told me about Knit Picks having a yarn swift case. I didn't even know these things existed. And I ended up ordering two because a lot of my um, Native American whistles are this length. And so I can wrap them up in a special cloth that I have and I can put them in the case when I travel with them. So I wanted to show you my swift. And if you're looking for something like this, I do have the links in the video description below. Okay, so this is my Swift, and this attaches to my craft table that I have here, but you need to make sure that you have a table that has a lip, you know, to attach this. And so what you do, let's hope I won't hit myself in the face with this. So this comes up like this, and you can, you know, adjust it for any different size. Um, this, unwinds into you know a big a big thing i have a little video on my channel if you want to look at that I, I show you how to do how i do that but anyway so this this when the when the uh, ball winder pulls the yarn off this just spins freely which is really nice but it is you know it's a bit delicate um, because it is made of wood um but it's it's very nice i've had this for years this um a link in the video description if you're interested. But it's just really nice that instead of just putting it on a shelf and hoping that it doesn't get bumped, um, I can stick it in here. Because I've had to travel with this in the car back and forth to the Carolinas. And look, give me a second, I'm gonna show you my ball winder. I'm gonna let the video that I have on my channel demonstrate it. But again, this has a little thing here that you twist to attach it to a lip of a table. So you do have to have a table kind of that you can use with this. Now this is a lot bigger than a lot of the other ones on the market. Um, this is not the cheap economical one. This is, I think currently it's like $77, $78 on Amazon. I do have a link, an affiliate link in the video description below. But um, so what happens is you thread the yarn into this hole here and then you thread it into the yarn here. And then this is secured to the table. And then you just turn and you can see with every rotation, every time this goes around, this is going around four times. And that's, it, and that's how it winds these really nice, um, these really nice balls, nice and even. And um, anyway, and it, it does it within you know, less than a minute, where if I'm doing it by hand, it would probably take 20 minutes, 15 to 20 minutes going fast. So um, I just wanted to show that to you. It's called, um, it's, I'll let you see the name, the brand, it's Stanwood. They have other ones out there on the market, but this is like super heavy duty. And um, it, it can wind pretty large yarn balls with this. Um, a lot of the ones that are like, you know, $15, $20 that you can get, you're limited as to how much yarn you can put around those. And I will say that um, if it's pretty cheap online, um, there's a reason for that because a lot of them tend to break. Um, I've had this one uh, through all the books but one. My first book, The Contemporary Celtic Crochet, I wound all the yarn by hand. It was after completing that book and winding all of that yarn by hand that I invested in something like this, and I have been super thrilled about that. But just to let you know, yeah, these are an investment. This is, like I said, $77, $78, which is actually a pretty good price, but um, it's, it's very heavy duty. This is like metal, 
these gears are plastic, but it's super heavy duty plastic. Um, it's not, you know, cheapy stuff. So, and that has survived traveling back and forth, back and forth. So, um, <laughs> Melanie says she's hoping for um, an electric kettle so I don't have to run downstairs to warm up tea. Oh, okay. I thought she was talking about something else. Um, yeah. Uh, Amy says, I asked Santa for a yarn bowl this year. Yeah, they're, I mean, again, you know, they're, they're, they're beautiful. I mean, they're, yeah, I mean, you don't have to have something pretty for sure, but I really like mine. <laughs> I've actually got two now. I've got a smaller one, which was um, kind of a little squattier. And I like this one because it was, you know, higher. So I have this one for my Maryland crocheting time. And then I have the other one for when I am in South Carolina. So I have one in each place and you know, it's just kind of a little treat. Um, okay. So let me see. And we have, Oh, we have, uh, is it, is it Ly Lias? Lias from, from Greece. Oh, she says, my name is Katerina. Oh, what a beautiful name. That reminds me of, um, of a video. Anyway, of, 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 a, of, a, of a musical thing that I used to listen to. Um, beautiful. Um, and uh, let's see. Yeah. Okay, well, um, let me go ahead and try to finish out here. Oh, thank you, Backtrack, for your kind comment there. She says she loves a yarn bowl. There is a fabulous shop in the UK that makes them. Ooh, I would love to collect these things, you know? <laughs> that would be a fun thing to do. But um, maybe that's something people can get me for Christmas. I, I just love these things. And I've always got plenty of extra projects to put in them for sure. Um, T. Arab says, my cats would be on attack mode, but I like this bowl. Oh, I'm sure. I'm not going to use this around Noel or uh, Felix, the cat's um, in my kids' uh, families because uh, they would they would be right out. They'd be all over it. Um, Carolyn says, I'm a beginner at crochet, but I love your crochet and videos. I hope to be able to do your style of crochet in the near future. Love you. Well, thank you, Carolyn. Just keep doing the fundamental stitches. Do the easy projects for now. Do baby blankets. Baby blankets are big enough that will give you lots of practice the yarn you can use on them, just you know, the acrylic stuff in the stores is great. It's great for babies. Um, it's cheap and it's beautiful, colorful yarn. Make it fun for you, but just you know, just do something repeating the same stitches over and over in different ways. That'll get your tension right and you know, get that muscle memory built up so that when you do something like cables, which is not that that difficult, but if you're an absolute beginner, you know, just get those stitches even. And once you, you know, do that for, you know, several projects, dive in. Don't be afraid. You know, they, these are not that hard. They, these are not, not that hard. Um, Emily says, can't wait to see what hubby got me for Christmas. Hope it's yarn. Uh, Emily, you got lots of yarn. Uh, <laughs> she's selling yarn. Um, but isn't that funny? And Backtrack says, I use a nose, nose pin to wind my yarn. I know what that is because I've been to conferences, but I never would have known otherwise. That is very cool. That would be the longer way to do it, but that can be relaxing, I guess. Um, and Linda says, yes, Bonnie, I know someone told me when they're using a whole lot of colors, they used a rectangle laundry basket stacked with colors and the holes. Okay. And the holes were used to let out the yarn from the inside out. That's a brilliant idea. As long as it's not one of those cheap baskets that can tend to cut the yarn. Um, that's a great idea. Um, I like to use my African, um, my African yarn baskets or market baskets, um, for the larger, you know, uh, Afghan projects and things and just let the ball roll around in there because obviously it's not going to fit in here. Um, you know, the, the, the red heart, you know, like this, you know, these things <laughs> obviously aren't going to fit. Um, but I use, yeah, I don't have it with me. They're both, I have two filled with projects in the living room right now. But um, yeah, I use my, my African market baskets um, for these big things um, when I'm working on it. That's that's just old stash stuff right now. Um, 
And Patsy says, just wanted to thank you for the Friday live. I can't go anywhere because of my immune, I guess your immunity. This is such a blessing. And yours. So, thank you so much, Patsy. Yeah, it's we're all kind of stuck. <laughs> um, it's kind of funny. I went out to the grocery store at 730 in the morning a couple days ago with my husband. And it's just like, this is almost a date. We get to go out of the house together and walk the aisles at Safeway. How romantic. Actually, it was kind of fun, you know. <laughs> oh, the things that we used to take for granted are kind of a big deal now. Um, uh, let's see. Well, um, I think I'm getting close here. Uh, let's see. We have Nancy says, Hi, Bonnie. Very excited about your new pattern poncho or wrap that you just mentioned. So beautiful. Nancy from Massachusetts. Merry Christmas. Well, thank you, Nancy. And I also want to mention, too, that that you don't, I mean, that this will also be in my Lovecraft store. And I will have a video link to it. Um, it's going to be an unlisted link. In other words, it's going to be an, un, it's not going to be on my public YouTube page. It's going to be unlisted, kind of like the videos in um, Capel Crochet Made Easy have been for years. So um, this will still be available to you, but it would have to be through the pattern purchase. Um, it's just kind of a way, I talked about this last week, don't want to dwell on it too much, but it's just kind of a way to try to keep some of my techniques a little bit protected from, from the public, um, you know, stealing, copying kind of tendency that's out there right now. So, I mean, if people want to, you know, join my subscription base or if they want to purchase a pattern, then they can learn how to make it. Um, I am just a little hesitant to just, you know, put it out there for everybody to view um, and to just steal. So that's kind of, you know, that's just just what I want to do for a little while. I know it's not going to be that way forever, but it's just a way to protect my work just a little bit longer. Okay. Um, oh, we have Kimberly from Seattle. And she says, be blessed and have a great weekend. Thank you, Kimberly. Um, and Joey, um, Joni says, I made your shell stitch baby blanket, change the multiples for adult size. Yeah, that is a, that is a fun, relaxing stitch. I mean, it's just your basic shell stitch. And I, I love, I love doing things like that. And, and you can do amazing things in color. Um, looks like we have a, a, a comment. I'm going to have to, pro I'm going to have to, uh, 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 translate that once I get done here. I want to. Um, thank you for joining us. I will re I will have to interpret that later and, and get back to you or, you know, I'll understand what you're saying there. And we have Lorraine from Ontario, Canada. And Jane says she's really looking forward to the pattern. Thank you. And we have Melanie. Hey, Melanie. Um, ah, and I want it is from Poland. Thank you, Hannah. Thank you for doing that. Well, I wanted to read to you. I should have brought my tissues. I'm going to try to be try to be better about this today, guys. I, I read through it a couple times, so um, try to harden my heart a little bit, you know, so I don't lose it. Um, but I wanted to read to you the words of another um, Christmas carol that we, I know a lot of us sing and, and enjoy. And sometimes we have to slow down to really understand what they're saying. Um, so let me go ahead and read this. It was written in 1849 by a man named Edmund H. Sears. And the music is by Richard Willis in 1850. Um, it's called, It Came Upon the Midnight Clear. Um, okay, here we go. It came upon the midnight clear, that glorious song of old from angels bending near the earth to touch their harps of gold. Peace on the earth, goodwill to men, from heaven's all-gracious king. The world in solemn stillness lay to hear the angels sing. Still through the cloven skies they come with peaceful wings unfurled, and still their heavenly music floats over all the weary world. God knows it's a weary world even now. Above its sad and lowly plains, they bend on hovering wing, and ever over its babble sounds, the blessed angels sing. And ye beneath life's crushing load, whose forms are bending low, 
who toil along the climbing way with painful steps and slow. Look now, for glad and golden hours come swiftly on the wing. Oh, rest beside the weary road and hear the angels sing. For lo, the days are hastening on by prophets seen of old, when with the ever circling years shall come the time foretold, when the new heaven and earth shall own the Prince of Peace their King, and the whole world send back the song which now the angels sing. Isn't that beautiful? Well, I hope, I hope that blessed you. I, I had to read it a few times today with tissues to, to get it, get through it. Um, just love, love, love that song. Um, but I just want to wish you all a wonderful week and um, stay safe out there. Stay warm. And Lord willing, we will see you here next Friday. God bless.